Good afternoon. We are in day four after lunch. After lunch. Good afternoon, sir. 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 Already, I have sent the link in the in WhatsApp group. I put that link wherein you can download all the PPTs of my PPTs. I think you can prepare for the test today evening itself. Uh, so in day four, we are in, uh, we are in the third part of OB, that is the uh, organization system. Already you have seen the organizational culture, the values and assumptions shared within an organization. In this session, um, we take up organization structure. Already I told you definitely the structure, that is uh, the relationship pattern of formal relationships will have an impact on employee behavior. So this session, we enter into organization structure. So this is the chapter outline. As usual, we start defining organization structure. And what are the various key elements when you design your organization? What are the essential elements that you should take care of? There are six, six major elements that we should consider. So we take up all the six elements. Then uh, we move on to common organizational designs. What are the various common, the popular organizational designs? Then we should understand what are all the forces that influence design options. Then finally, our uh, core part, how organizational design is associated with employee behavior. So this is the chapter outline. Let's start with uh, how to define structure. So this is how Robbins, Stephen P. Robbins defines organization structure. How job tasks are formally divided, grouped, and coordinated. In an organization, we have to perform number of tasks how do you divide? After dividing, how do you group? And how do you coordinate these tasks? That is structure. How job tasks are formally divided, grouped, and coordinated? Or in simple terms, we can define a structure like this pattern of relationships among various parts of an organization. Actually, the literal meaning of the word structure is this only in English language wherever we use the term structure it refers to the relationship between various parts for example in finance those who are in finance may know you start with capital structure capital structure is all about the relationship between your debt and equity component of your capital so in English language, the literal meaning of the term structure is relationship between various parts that make up a whole. So now we are concerned with organization structure. It's all about the pattern of formal relationships within an organization. Or as Robin said, how job tasks are formally divided, grouped and coordinated. As I said, there are six key elements in designing structure. We take up one by one. First, we start with division of labor, also called work specialization. What is division of labor? The degree to which tasks in the organization are subdivided into separate jobs. So people 
do not perform the entire activity but they specialize in a part a specific part of that activity for example i am working in jig school of management studies mba department i specialize in hr i don't teach all the subjects i specialize in hr so that is what specialization now if you look back my late 1970s sorry 40s late 1940s in most of the industrialized nations most of the manufacturing jobs were highly specialized so that was uh, by late 1940s most of the manufacturing jobs in industrialized countries were highly specialized and time went on by late 1960s in some of these jobs the productivity declined because of specialization okay so because of specialization what happens you can observe in the graph at the bottom we have taken what specialization on a continuum from low to high then uh, we plot it with productivity on a continuum low to high because of specialization productivity goes up economies of specialization after a period when jobs when some of the jobs are highly specialized then slowly productivity declines why productivity declines because human diseconomies overtake economies of specialization what is meant by human diseconomies maybe because of high specialization employee may feel bored it what may seem to be monotonous fatigue absences may increase turnover may increase anyhow productivity declines so you may have a question so what should we do relating to those jobs if you recall in motivation i told you i we talked about job enlargement enlargement is horizontal expansion of jobs so in such jobs instead of specialization you should go for enlargement so that you can avoid particular problem so the first key element is division of labor or of specialization we should remember the impact from economies of specialization we should also remember the human diseconomies of specialization second key element departmentalization already we know we divide jobs and then group jobs the basis by which jobs are grouped together on what basis the jobs are grouped together departmentalization what are the basis these are the basis it may be functions product geography or territory process customer let's take up one by one so this is functional departmentalization just to represent i have written president a designation can be anything it can be simply a manager it can be a general manager it can be vice president it can be anything it depends upon the organization but just to represent i have written president so someone at the top the tasks are arranged for group 
on the basis of the function. All the tasks associated with production are included in the production department. Then we have marketing department, finance department, HR department. Now you may have a doubt how this arrangement will help to improve productivity. What are the advantages? Can you, can you think about the advantages if tasks are grouped like this on the basis of the function? Probably what are the major benefits? Just think about it. I think uh, we have some marketing people. So these marketing people like marketing. They specialize in marketing. Right? So they prefer to work in marketing department. And probably they will not like to work in production department. I like HR. So I would like to work in HR department and not in finance department. So people specialize in production, in marketing, in finance, or in HR. Their interests it depends upon their interests, likes and dislikes. So over a period of time, they acquire skills in that area. Production department people are always concerned with production. Their focus is on production. So they gain skills related to production. Maybe after a period of time, um, they become highly skilled in that particular area. So this is functional departmentalization. Now you may have one doubt. Functional departmentalization, okay. Production, marketing, finance, HR, okay. If there are more number of products, then there will be confusion. If there are more number of products in, in a functional department, uh, coordination problems may occur. So in that case, what should we do? Probably the answer is product departmentalization. You organize based on product. For example, in this case, there is a vice president. Under vice president, there are three divisions. Fuel division, lubricants and waxes, chemicals. People in fuel division focus only on fuels. There may be various functions, but all those functions relate to fuel. So this is good. This arrangement uh, overcomes the coordination problems created by functional departmentalization in this kind of a situation. So product departmentalization has its own benefits. You can add products, right? If you have this kind of an arrangement without any complication, if you want to add one more product, one more division, you can add because that will not affect the earlier divisions that you have. Then territorial. When you operate in a vast area, for example, LIC, Life Insurance Corporation of India, operates throughout India, from Jammu Kashmir to Kanyakumari. So the best uh, way to departmentalize is on the basis of the territory region. They are eastern, central, northern, southern, western. Now you may have a doubt how this this will benefit LIC. If you if you go through the details of each zone, the attitudes and behaviors of people in those zones, there may be differences. There may be attitudes and behavior may differ. For example, their habits may differ, their interests, their uh, festivals. So 
it is always better to departmentalize on the basis of this region or territory in this case you can understand people better southern zone has its own culture western zone has its own culture so you can respond to those differences effectively when you departmentalize on the basis of a region uh, railways for example indian railways is organized on the basis of territory or uh, another option is uh, you can uh, departmentalize on the basis of the process you may have to perform number of processes so better organize work around processes for example in this case there is a general manager and the general manager we have four divisions first division casting division so employees in casting division are concerned only with casting pressing division finishing division packing division so how this will benefit for example people in casting division they they focus only on casting the skills the skills associated with casting they they, they acquire skills associated with casting so like this they specialize so another option is customer departmentalization you have variety of customers it is better to have customer departmentalization for example in this case there is a general manager and there are wholesale customers there are retailers export is there government also one of the customers in that case it is better to organize around customers how this will benefit because uh, maybe your terms and conditions may differ when government is your customer what you should do how how you will promote your product is different from that of the wholesaler for a retailer how to promote may be different from for example export how to promote your product for export purpose there are differences so easily you can respond to those uh, differences by having uh, customer departmentalization so departmentalization is very important next element chain of command command we know chain of command so it's all about the line of authority that extends from the top of the organization to the lowest levels so oh, since uh, we have number of people from other disciplines i think uh, i should tell something about authority also what is authority we know we know what is authority the right to give orders or right to command in simple terms we can say the right to command authority is the right to command the so chain of command refers to that line of authority that extends from the top to the bottom it's an unbroken line of authority chain of command uh, you may know about henry files 14 principles one of the 14 principles is um, unity of command one employee should receive instruction from only one source that is one superior one employee one boss that is unity of command if an employee gets orders from more than one sources then probably he may not be effective so that is one of the principles relating to chain of command unity of command that must be only one source span of control 
pan of control refers to a number pan the span span refers to a number span of control the number of subordinates a manager can efficiently and effectively direct suppose you just imagine like this on manager he has three subordinates so he spends time to oversee the activities of these three subordinates another situation suppose there is one manager he has some 11 subordinates so he spends time to oversee the activities of 11 subordinates so naturally the manager's efficiency and effectiveness will differ the concept span of control refers to a number of subordinates a manager can efficiently and effectively direct actually this number depends upon number of factors let us avoid details right this particular number that is number of subordinates that a manager can efficiently and effectively direct depends upon number of factors let us avoid that but uh, let us consider the the basic problem in span of control in, uh, in the picture if you assume a span of four this is what happens you assume a span of eight this happens so what do we infer if the span is low that is narrow this results in a tall structure there will be more number of levels and there will be more managers if the span is wide there will be less number of levels and less number of managers. So in general, in general, people say wider spans result in efficiency. Again, as usual, there are a number of reasons why wider span results in efficiency. There are a number of reasons. Let, let us avoid details. But we just remember narrow span tall structure wide span wide structure narrow span more number of levels and more number of managers wide span lesser number of levels compared to tall structure and less number of managers efficiency next element centralization and decentralization Here, centralization, decentralization relates to authority. There are some experts who argue that uh, this is not necessarily pertaining to authority alone. It relates to activities also. You may centralize or decentralize your activities. Let us avoid uh, the uh, deviations. Here, in this case, centralization, decentralization relates to authority. Centralization, the degree to which decision making is concentrated. That is, centralization means concentration of authority. Concentration of authority. Decentralization, dispersion of authority. That is why it's written like this. Decision making is pushed down to the managers closest to the action. And so, manager will make the decision, and not the top management. That is decentralization. Centralization, concentration of authority, decentralization, dispersion of authority. Then another element, actually, I should have written in the next slide, but just to save slides, number of slides I have written here itself. Last element, I think, formalization, formal formalization. 
the degree to which jobs within the organization are standardized. If you say very strictly, this is how you should do your job. Everything is prescribed. The employee has no discretion at all. Just he has to perform as per the instruction. Then we say the job is highly standardized. High formalization. Formalization. Suppose you give discretion to the employee. This is what you have to do. Do in your own way, in your own preferred way. Now the employee has a discretion. Low formalization. So formalization may be high or low. If jobs are standardized, I think I have given, oh, I have put it in a slide also. The, the picture shows standardization high low your standardized jobs that result in formalization so this is what extent you give discretion to the employee formalization so these are the elements elements in organizational design now we take up the next uh, question. Already I told you, what are the common organizational designs? There are some common organizational designs. First, we start with simple structure. A very simple structure. If you look at the picture, there are salespersons there is a manager or owner the salespersons work under the owner or manager so in this case we do not have departments there is wide span of control because all the sales people work under uh, owner or manager authority is centralized because the owner or the manager only makes decisions there is little formalization Rules, rules and regulations are not that much. So it is a simple structure. So why do you find uh, this kind of uh, structure? In most of the small businesses, you find this kind of a uh, structure, simple structure. Bureaucracy is another common design. In bureaucracy, most of the routine jobs are specialized. So we find specialization. There will be rules and regulations. For anything and everything, there will be a rule. Who should open the door? There will be a rule. Who should close the door? There will be a rule. A departments on the basis of function. Decision making is centralized. Centralized authority. Narrow spans of control. So obviously that will result in a tall structure. So tall structure, decision making at the top, functional departments, too many rules and regulations, specialization. So Max Weber. He recommended this kind of a structure. And if you go through that uh, statement in the cartoon, you will understand uh, how bureaucracy works. Can you read that uh, statement?
Have you read it? He said. So <laughs> one, one single statement. All about bureaucracy. And third design, third common design, matrix structure. This matrix structure combines functional and product departmentalization. If you look at the top of the picture, you find functional departmentalization. Already we know what is functional department. You can find manufacturing, sales, this is nothing but functional departmentalization. Then at the left hand side, if you look at it, then manager project A, manager project B, manager project C. It can be product also, product, product A, product B, product C. There is a uh, there is a slight difference between uh, product and project. If it is product, then it will be permanent. Product A, product B, product C. If it is project, once a particular project is completed, these employees in different units will go back to their home departments. So you just look at the manufacturing unit comes under manager project A. Manufacturing unit that comes under manager project A. So employees in that unit will receive instructions from their home department from the top manufacturing manager and also from manager project A. So these employees will get instructions from two sources. One is from their home department and from project manager. So this particular arrangement violates the principle of unity of command. That is why in the second statement it is given creates dual lines of authority employees receive instructions from two sources one is from their home department it may be manufacturing sales hr finance and the other other sources the particular project manager matrix structure but, uh, but the structure is uh, Beneficial in number of situations. So these are the three common organizational designs. But now, we talk about number of uh, new design options. Probably you are familiar with this one, virtual organization, network organization, or modular organization. Virtuality, we all know, virtual, virtual. Here, if you look at the picture, at the center, you have one executive group. A small group, it's a small group. This executive group is the real people who own that organization, executive group. And this group outsources the various business functions. For example, this group needs R&D department. So they outsource from independent R&D, research and development consulting firm. And they have to produce. They make use of some factories in South Korea. So that function is outsourced. So now they have the product. Products are ready, even though they don't own uh, factories. 
they they outsourced now they have the product they advertise they make use of advertising agencies and they sell with the help of commissioned sales representatives one just one small group a core organization outsources all the other business functions this is a network organization or modular organization or virtual organization now this is a very important development in organizational design boundary list the name itself implies we can understand very easily boundary list so what is the essence of this type of organization you try to eliminate all the boundaries what are the various boundaries within an organization for example we have different levels levels hierarchy eliminated no hierarchy departments eliminated why you say i am in hr department i am not concerned with finance why you say like that eliminate kinds of control limitless a manager can have any number of subordinates okay i said uh, eliminate departments um how you have to group it should be organized right how to organize teams there will be empowered teams there will be teams empower them so if you look at uh, if you look at the picture i think it shows everything all barriers both inside and outside the organization are eliminated outside the organization relates to for example suppliers actually the term boundaryless organization was coined by jack welch of general electric company very important development suitable for a certain number of certain situations okay now in organizational design there are two extremes so since there are two extremes we have two models these two are extremes one is mechanistic model the other one is organic model actually already we have seen the kind of arrangement that will be in each of these but the name mechanistic just you think about that the term and the literal meaning of it mechanistic mechanistic organic so we have two extremes mechanistic model and organic model mechanistic model what are the characteristics there is a high degree of specialization departments work is organized around departments there is a clear chain of command narrow spans of control centralized authority high formalization for anything and everything you have a rule formalization so no discretion allowed so almost this is similar to our bureaucracy already we have seen bureaucracy most mechanistic model resembles bureaucracy there is a high degree of specialization departments chain of command narrow spans of control centralized authority no discretion allowed mechanistic model this is one extreme the other extreme organic model cross functional teams you have functional teams not just functional teams cross functional teams 
across hierarchical teams not just hierarchical teams across hierarchical teams free flow of information information flows freely if you look at the mechanistic model there is a clear chain of command so instruction should come from boss to his subordinate in mechanistic model but here in organic model free flow of information wide spans of control just opposite to mechanistic model here wide spans of control authority is decentralized and there is a low degree of formalization means employees have discretion so two extremes now what are the advantages of these two can you just think about uh, these two design options if you if you adopt a mechanistic model in your company what will happen if you adopt an organic model to design what will happen just think about it right now what are the forces forces that influence choice of design you may have a doubt um, can i can i adopt any one of these uh, designs no there are number of forces which will determine your option what are the forces there are four major forces that determine choice of design first one your organization strategy what is your strategy that will determine your option what about the company size that will determine your option what about the technology you adopt what about your business environment all these will have an impact on your choice of design let's go one by one. let's take up one by one let us start with organization strategy suppose your strategy is innovation innovation already we know right you are familiar with creativity and innovation innovation is a new idea applied to initiating or improving a product process or service if your strategy is innovation then it is better to have an organic model why structure will be loose you will have a loose structure so that employees can be creative and innovative i, I think someone is asking some questions is someone asking i think you are not audible are you not i think you are not audible okay so in case if your strategy is in, in case if your strategy is cost minimization then it is better to have a mechanistic model already already we are familiar with mechanistic model why why for cost minimization mechanistic model if you just go back to your earlier slide you can understand then in case if your strategy is imitation and it is better to have a mix of these okay. two models mechanistic and organic now you may have a doubt how to have mix mix of mechanistic and organic models you are doing something currently 
you should have mechanistic that is tight, tight control over these activities and you are going to undertake some new activities for that you should have organic that is loose structure so organization strategy to adopt will have an impact on the choice of design actually structure follows strategy structure follows strategy second factor organization size if your company grows and grows and more and more number of employees work then probably you have to create departments and you will make them specialize in jobs so when a company grows you have to choose a particular model so that you can be effective i think uh, there is some kind of background uh, noise okay third factor is technology uh, how we define technology uh the way an organization converts inputs into outputs how an organization converts the inputs into outputs is called its technology there are differences in technology how technology differs across companies routines routines of activities when you adopt when you adopt different technologies major difference will be routineness of activities if your activities are routine suppose your activities are routine day in day out you perform the same activities then probably you can adopt a mechanistic model if your activities are non routine today you perform something tomorrow you perform something else then probably you may require an organic model and fourth factor environment just uh, look at this uh, picture three three dimensions are mentioned on the top you find stable suppose you have a stable environment resources are abundant and it's a simple simple environment that is not too many forces influence the performance of your organization in that case our environment is simple stable and resources are abundant then probably you may prefer mechanistic structure if resources are scarce there is bottom side the environment is highly dynamic it's highly complex and resources are scarce then you have to go for organic structure so these are the four major forces factors that influence choice of design these two are extremes mechanistic model or two extremes some disturbances it then finally we take up um, how these designs of people can apply 
structure oral session structure can have significant impact on its members behavior i have a doubt like this suppose you are working in a department right from morning till evening your boss is watching you right from morning till evening your boss is always watching you how you feel can someone answer so this is called close supervision right close supervision your boss is always watching you how you feel it's a irritating sir definitely it will be irritating right and so the over for the job suppose your boss never uh, presents to you you can't see your boss there is distant supervision he is at a place at a distance he never comes to you and uh, observes you how you feel you are not going to be motivated towards the job correct but the but the so close to here we consider two major uh, types of supervision close supervision distant supervision close supervision will happen when you have a narrow span of control suppose uh, one boss has just two or three subordinates what he will do right from morning till evening he will be watching the three so if there is a narrow span of control there will be close supervision suppose a there is a wide span of control one boss has number of subordinates then probably he may not have that much time to watch all the subordinates so in that case we will adopt a distant uh, supervision uh, what you said was uh, if there is close supervision you will be irritated and if there is distant supervision people will be motivated uh, so there are differences the problem is we cannot generalize that is why i have written that second statement we cannot generalize not everyone prefers the freedom of organic structure there are some people who want uh, instructions tell me what should i do tell me what should i do if you tell me i will do it otherwise i will be confused so there are some people who work like that so the problem is we cannot generalize okay if if we have a mechanistic structure then what will affect the satisfaction level of employees if you have a mechanistic structure already we know the characteristics of mechanistic structure highly centralized high formalization highly standardized the level of firmness in policies and procedures that will predict that will determine the satisfaction level of employees if you have a mechanistic structure then you have to be very careful with perception of employees about your uh, policies and procedures perception of fairness about your policies and procedures uh, in, in in choosing uh, the different options structural options you have to consider individual differences what are the various uh, individual differences maybe maybe you have to consider the experience experience of the subordinates uh, personality the what task that is to be performed so major major uh, individual differences be considered or experience of the employees personality of the employee then uh, what task you should also consider the national culture what sort of culture we have culture differs across uh, countries for example power distance some countries have low power distance others have a high power distance 
in some countries people accept to a great extent the unequal distribution of power for example in india in india to some extent we accept unequal distribution of power but in some countries uh, for example us they will not accept that so for example if a, if a press reporter wants to ask a question to his president then simply he will ask mr president what is your opinion about this? that's it but in india we can't do that we, we accept the unequal distribution of power okay that so uh, what i want to say is uh, you should consider natural uh, national cultures also we should consider preferences preferences for what specialization span of control and centralization to what extent your employees prefer specialization span of control number of subordinates authority centralized decentralized so these are to be considered in choosing a particular uh, option doubts doubts and questions sir may i sir yes sir and just i want to add on sir just say uh, yes yes sir uh, yeah according to me sir i i think power cannot be distributed between equally between the employer and the employee what i want to say sir power cannot be distributed uh, yes, between yes, between sir. Employee. yes sir correct sir correct uh, but uh, in uh, that is in india if you uh, in india if you look at uh, behavior of people then uh, suppose uh, district collector comes sit collector then everybody will give respect and uh, there will be sars only nobody will call the, that person by name if, I, if that person is krishnan definitely nobody will back to address that person uh, mr krishnan what do you think about this particular problem nobody will ask in india because in india we accept uh, unequal distribution of power in general in general we accept unequal distribution of power power is unequally distributed if you in any group in any organization in any society you can find unequal distribution of power that is some people have more power than others but in yes, us sir. in countries like us they will not accept that uh, there will be there will be unequal distribution of power to some extent but they will not accept they are not ready to accept that so so that is why they behave like that uh, mr trump what do you think about this particular problem the reporter may ask like that but in india we can't ask like that even if you stand in the way of a uh, politician uh, probably people may not like that um, they will take you away from that place so we should consider uh, the national culture doubts sir uh, i guess my friend is actually he is trying to say that oh he is not a employer and employee but uh, collector is not the employer or for that matter in us employer employee power cannot be you know equal but in other sense it can be equal like uh, subordinate and supervisor supervisor is not the employer he is also an employee yes sir yes sir but uh, but uh, the point is in general in a society that is that is power will be unequally distributed uh, true i agree that's what i'm right. saying what you said absolutely uh, right uh, right i'll i'll come to that sir power will be unequally distributed in any group in any organization or in any society the point is what extent you accept it 
in general in general to what extent people in a group or people in an organization or people in the society accept it since since we are brought up in indian culture we are trained we are trained like that to accept the unequal distribution of power so we give much more respect and you can observe behaviors of people for example suppose uh, there is a peon in a company how the peon behaves you observe the peon you observe a middle level manager you observe a top level manager there will be differences in their behavior because of the power they have one of the one of the reasons right? there are a number of other reasons but one of the reasons the peon whenever he finds somebody then he says good morning sir good morning sir good morning sir good morning sir it's not necessary he is expected to perform certain duties and he is responsible for something it is enough if he discharges those uh, duties and responsibilities then why should he say good morning sir good morning sir good morning sir uh, when manager comes immediately he stands up only after that person leaves he sits down uh and sometimes uh, even in some uh, some areas people will remove their chapels when big charts come then um, people will remove their chapels and they will stand it means very true sir absolutely absolutely you are right absolutely. it means we accept that unequal distribution of power but in some uh, cultures they don't accept what is there i am doing my duty you are doing your duty just uh, in organizations in some organizations uh, they encourage this that is you need not bother about the positions all are equal in some organizations they encourage it for example i am told that um, uh, in tvs group of companies i am not sure to what extent it is correct but just i am told like this uh, mr venu srinivasan whenever he enters into company premises he wears the uniform and managers in uh, tvs group of companies they take uh, lunch from the same canteen uh, from where uh, workers take lunch so this is the just they are telling that everyone is equal true sir even if uh, even if we have seen that uh, facebook uh, ceo he sits among with his employees jakobog he sits with uh, uh, his his office employees i mean he doesn't have any even if a special uh, status of course you are right in india we accept this kind of uh, uh, yes. culture yes, sir. in uh, ibm in ibm there is a story like this if somebody joins ibm probably they will come across this story during their onboarding uh, one day watson uh, he took his secretary along with him uh, just he wanted to visit all the premises of his company so the founder of ibm watson along with his secretary they started visiting all the premises of their own company and on a particular day they are about to enter into a particular room and someone inside that room shouted no don't enter don't enter stop then immediately watson stopped but the secretary was shocked and he asked that uh, guy hey you know to whom you are talking to then that person replied yes i know he is the founder of this company then secretary shouted then then that guy politely said then if you want to enter into this room you must wear that uh, uniform a, a, a protective uh, you must wear that then only you can enter correct correct watson, 
Watson appreciated. Watson appreciated and turned back. So this is the story. This is a story, a real incident, in the form of a story. This story tells that all are equal in IBM. All are equal. You have to tell something to say all are equal. Otherwise, uh, it means all are not equal, unequal. So, so when you when you design an organization, you need to consider all these persons. Okay, I think uh, almost uh, we have completed four days of FDP. Just one more day to go. And um, already I have sent the link to download uh, the PPTs. So tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon session is very important. Because of two reasons. First reason, tomorrow afternoon session is uh, the Fit India program. Fit India. We have one uh, clinical psychologist. There is Elias, and he will give you some stress interventions. Uh, everyone is stressed, especially uh, during this pandemic period. People are stressed, irrespective of uh, the age, designation, the job. People are stressed. So I think uh, we need some stress interventions. So tomorrow afternoon, a clinical psychologist by name Jerry Elias, he will come and give you some stress interventions. So you have to be, please uh, try to be attentive tomorrow after lunch. Then second reason, uh, during that session, we will give link for the test in the chat during the last session of this fdp we will put the link for the test in the chat so what you have to do is immediately after that session uh, he will complete it within some 50 55 minutes so after that you can complete uh, i think um, uh, uh, some of the participants express their uh, uh, inability um, to attend test during that time, but uh, there is no problem. You need not uh, wait till 4, 4.30, like that. Uh, and finish the test early. So we will put the link. Just you take that link and finish the test. Uh, the point is, um, by 4.45, uh, you should have completed the test to be in the safer side, right? We uh, we have time till five o'clock, but uh, but don't do that. Don't do that. Probably I don't know what Atal Portal will do. So uh, uh, take it as four forty-five, four forty-five p.m. You have time till four forty-five to take the test. Just complete that test. So tomorrow afternoon it's very important because. One is stress intervention by a clinical psychologist. Second one is we will give you the link for the test. You take the test before 4.40. You should complete the test before 4.45 p.m. Doubts and concerns? Participants, do you have any problem in that? Sir, can we get the yes, size of the mother which was the Pardon, madam, I don't get your question. Lies from I, other resource persons also. Oh, okay. Today, after this session, and uh, today I will talk to them. I, uh, okay, okay, fine, thank you. I think they came up with appropriate uh, PPTs, right, madam? They used PPTs. Hmm? Did they use PPTs? PPT. 
Yeah, PPT is yes, that one. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Okay. Then, uh, then uh, no, now I will ask them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, the test link will be shared in uh, WhatsApp group or in this chat box? Um, uh, in the chat box, sir. Not in the WhatsApp okay, group. Sir, even even we can put it in WhatsApp group also. But uh, during the session itself, we will put it, sir. Okay, so that sir. Everybody, Thank you, sir. Because, because some members may not be in WhatsApp group or they may not look at it. So it is better. It is better to put it in the chat box. During the yes. session, okay. So, how the attendance has been taken? Because we have not marked anywhere. No, madam, uh, it is automatically recorded. Okay, okay, fine. We, we, Thank you. We have your attendance. We have a technical okay. team. We have a technical team. They do that. Okay, fine, sir. Any other doubt? Okay, thank you for your cooperation and support. We'll meet tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.